Welcome back to Knives of the Week. And today we're gonna to take a look at seven knives from three companies and kind of do a brief introduction to each. Let's go ahead and get started. Now the first knife we're gonna talk about is the Morel from Avasti. Now this has aluminum handles, aluminum back spacer, it is a crossbar lock, and it has, once again, that kind of shillin cutter shape that I fell in love with, with the Nightshade. Not quite the same though. This is a full flat grind, this is a compound grind. So what do I mean by that? There's two different grind angles here. There's a thicker, uh, taper here and then a thinner one up front, which is a little bit different from what I'm used to seeing with compound grinds, where it'll be thinner back here, maybe a hollow grind, and then a saber or something along those lines for the front, which will make it better for piercing tasks. So this is actually kind of cool. I like, I like the grind actually quite a bit, because if you are going to use it for wood carving or anything like that, you have a thicker edge, which causes the wood to kind of split off a little bit easier closer to what you would experience with a saber grind, but then you have this large flat grind area for doing thin cutting tasks, food prep, and that kind of thing. So I do like the shape of the blade quite a bit. Now the action on this thing is actually ridiculous. Very, very, very good. The strength of the crossbar, the spring te tension is way on the high side. Not a bad thing though. I wanna be clear about that. I talked about this a little bit with the Corsair. If you combine that with the right combination of how far out the um, lock bar is sticking from the frame and you know you have right grip, I think it could work okay. I think, however, that this is not a knife I would recommend to someone who is starting out in this journey because of a couple reasons. First of all, the action is really, really good, meaning you have to have good muscle memory to keep your fingers out of the way of the blade. And going with that, you can notice that it tapers out and is thinner as it approaches the back. Now this makes it very, very comfortable in hand. I really do like it, but you really have to be good about keeping your fingers out of the path of the blade as it's moving around. Now you can absolutely open and close this two-handed, that's not a problem, but before you start using it one-handed, make sure you have your muscle memory dialed in, because I think this is one of those knives where you definitely want to pay attention. It's just very smooth, very, very good action, and it's just something to keep aware of. But great job done by Vosteed. My only qualm here is that it's in N690. In my opinion, this is a downgrade over the 154 CM. Some will disagree, but I think that this is a more balanced steel. I don't think the edge tension difference is all that great. And N690 does not have very much toughness at all. A lot of people still like it. It is sort of considered a mid-grade steel, just like 154CM. But my personal preference, I actually prefer 154CM to N690. Just what I think. But I know that Vosti will benefit from having some variety in materials that they use. And I think this is a good option for those who do like that steel. Love the handle on this thing. Great design, the Morel. So we have two send cuts on the table. The first one we've talked about in the past, and that is the Serene, but now it is in a new color. Now this is not the bright green that you sometimes see. It's a little bit more muted, and I kind of like that, if I'm being honest. So we, this is a flipper tab D2 blade, full flat grind, three and a half inch um, blade length, has thumb studs as well. You can deploy it with the button. You can deploy it with the flipper. You can reverse flick it on the thumb stud. You can use the thumb studs for standard deployment. It's just a very fidgety knife, but it has all the features of a good EDC blade in that it can do the utility tasks, the food prep, pretty much everything, all right? It's a, just a good all around knife at under 50 bucks with an aluminum handle. Not much more to say. That's pretty good price for something that has this combination of features. And I don't know with, with which one I like better. I think I'm leaning towards the black one, but uh, both are pretty nice. Uh, normally I wouldn't like the green, but this more muted green, it's definitely more in my wheelhouse. What do you guys think? Which one would you prefer, green or black? The other knife that we have from Senkut is called the Jubal, and it's a different style of knife. A very slim, very small profile, very, very light, and it is a front flipper only. So this is a very good draw cutting knife 
Of course, it'd be great for opening packages. It's a little bit small in my opinion for food prep tasks, and it's also not exactly my favorite shape for it either. I, I'm actually not sure where this knife fits in. Where would I carry this? And maybe you guys can help me. Let me know, where would you carry this knife? What makes sense and why would you wanna purchase it? I, I will say though, I really like a full flat grind with a Warncliffe blade shape because man, that tip just cuts so, so, so well. Very nice, very comfortable in hand, but you have to have good, you know, like you have to have good technique to get this thing open. I don't think it's for everyone for sure, but maybe it's for you. Let me know if it is for you. Let me know down in the comments. Now this is definitely something different. I've said it many times. When a company sends me something and they don't tell me what it is, sometimes that can be the most fun experience because you know it's not something I would have picked myself. And this is an example of a knife I certainly wouldn't have gotten if I had made the choice. Now, I mean, just look at this shape. I, I've never owned any knife that looks anything like it. It's a recurve blade with a compound grind the blade steel here, let's see, what's the blade steel? S35VN, so that's great. It's called the Huntsman. And uh, it is a frame lock or a bolster lock, I should say, right? And uh, what an interesting piece. One thing I will, I will mention, the location of the lock bar makes me very nervous because you see, normally I'm used to putting my fingers all the way up here to disengage the lock, which I think is what you're supposed to do but some people might put it here, right? This is what you're supposed to do so that you can stop the blade as it falls. But if you put back here, as you can see, there's a bit of an issue in that you will have it come down in your finger. So just make sure you move your finger up to where the, uh, the top part is so that you can stop the blade. The action on this thing is incredibly smooth, which kind of leads into the whole being careful when you unlock the knife kind of situation. It does have the ability to reverse flick. It has a really neat looking fuller. I don't even know what you call this. It's not really a fuller, right? It's, it's just milled pattern in the cutouts. Plenty of space to actually grab with the reverse flick. Just an interesting blade for sure. Let me know down in the comments if this is something that you are interested in. Should I be pursuing more weird knives on the channel? Either way, I think the Huntsman is a unique piece that I've would never have gotten had it not been something that uh, Kaiser sent me. What's interesting though, this handle, this handle is really comfortable and I, it's weird. It doesn't look like it should be, but it is actually really comfortable. I think they could have done away with a second cutout, but for my hand, it actually fits perfectly. So that was sort of a lucky thing. Not all, that's not always the case with everybody but very, very, very cool knife and blade. We have carbon fiber inlays. We have a milled titanium pocket clip, titanium back spacer. This is absolutely in the premium line. And they even, yeah, it looks like they even put a carbon fiber pivot collar around there as well. So that's a nice little added touch. Overall, very, very, very interesting knife coming out of Kaiser. And uh, don't know much about it. The designer for this, let's see, who's the designer? James Lowe. Very interesting piece of work, I have to say. Very, very cool. Anyway, that's the Huntsman from Kaiser Knives. Next up is an interesting one, and I actually really, really like it. This is called the Doberman. It is an all titanium black wash titanium handle. I love black wash titanium, not surprising. It also has a really cool titanium clip. This reminds me very, very much of um, the clips that you will get on inexpensive plastic pens, but it's not that way at all. It's actually just um, a titanium clip and it is a nice, it has really good retention, which is great. This knife is flipper tab capable, but it, it kind of hides. So there's the flipper tab right there and you can put all of your finger up front and, and you can actually choke up on this knife, no problem. So really, really nice in S35VN, you can actually just there's a lot of different grips with this knife, which is quite cool. The action is excellent. I will say though that I, I when it's when the blade is far further away, or where I disengage it is far away from the blade, I'm always a little nervous as it closes. 
where it's going to set. Now, in this case, we're good. We're good to go. Definitely fine, as you can see. But you have to kind of get out of the way of that flipper tap. So it's not my favorite thing in the world, but the advantage is you have a really great position for the flipper tap, so it's almost impossible to fail. And you have this nice resting place right behind the blade. So all in all, I do like this knife quite a bit. It is a very comfortable handle, very, very, very comfortable. And uh, yeah, just another nice premium offering from Kaiser. Cannot say much more. It came perfectly centered. This blade length is 3.64, so it's definitely a big knife, absolutely. The designer is right there. I'm actually not sure because it is initials who exactly this is, but uh, really nice work. I'd like to see some more from this designer as well. Um, very, very comfortable. This is definitely a knife I would consider actually using, and I like that quite a bit. It has a great blade shape and a lot of jumping all the way up to here. So yeah, not much more to say. The Doberman, excellent knife from Kaiser Knives. Next on the table, we have two more knives from Kaiser, but this is in their budget line. So if you didn't watch my past video, the budget line from Kaiser are pretty much the same in like basic makeup. They have a G10 handles, they have a 9CR18 MOV blade steel, and there's just a variety of different uh, combinations and looks. They, both of them have reversible pocket clips, which I like quite a bit. And uh, yeah, some very big differences in design and shape and purpose. So the first one, the Submarine, I love this knife. It feels very comfortable in hand. There are multiple ways to deploy the knife. Uh, you can thumb flick it through the hole. You can reverse flick the knife, no problem. If you want, you can use the fuller and reverse flick it there. It has nice, even ground edge. Very nice. They always do a pretty good job, at least from my experience. The only thing I will say is I would love to have some jimping right here at the corner on the flipper, but because of the position of it, it's very, 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 very hard to fail. So overall, I like this knife quite a bit. I'm hoping that it comes in a nice competitive price tag. These run usually between $40 and $55, depending on where they're being sold and who's, you know, what the discounts are. But you're, you're gonna see a variety of different prices for both these knives and any of the Kaiser budget line. So the next one is the Porcupine. And I love this Warncliffe blade shape. It is very cool. Now the action on all of these is really, really, really good. Like better than most knives out there. And that's not surprising. They're made in the same factory as, you know, the high-end Kaisers, which have incredible action. They're probably even using the same bearings. So overall, I like this knife quite a bit. This is a surprisingly comfortable handle for me personally. I don't know if it'll fit everyone's hand, but for me, I like it quite, quite a bit. The only thing I'm gonna say with this knife is it has a flipper tab, which comes at right here. If you don't, if you move your hand back, you might have an issue. Now, if you have your hand here, you're gonna have an issue. If you have your finger up here when you disengage, you'll be fine. Just keep that in mind. Um, usually a flipper tab, if there's a, a harder, engagement so you can like move your hand out of the way and then from there you know drop it so flipper tabs can be great like that but when they're really minimal which they're doing so that you can choke up on it which i really do like actually you just have to be aware of your finger position when you're disengaging it because the action is so good as long as you do that i think you're going to enjoy this knife quite a bit if you're already good at that and you have knives that with really good action then this will not be anything surprising to you at all. Just a nice beater knife, a knife user, a knife user as I would say. And uh, yeah, another good offering from Kaiser. What do you guys think? So that wraps up our knives of the week. Which one was your favorite? Which one is most likely to make it into your pockets? For me, I think the one that surprised me the most has got to be the Huntsman. It just has a unique blade shape that I don't own anywhere in my collection. There's just nothing like it. And I feel like it'll grow on me over time, especially now that I've held, held it in my hands. The handle is incredibly comfortable. I'm, I'm just curious what you guys think. Which one would you choose if you were given the choice? As always, thank you for your time. And we'll talk again soon.